sumain ang kapayapaan at pag-ibig ng Diyos. Manalangin muna tayo. Sa ngala ng Ama, Anak, Espiritu Santo. Amen. Ama, pinapanalangin ko na sana maraming maliwanagan sa aming mga tinatalakay at marami kaming mabalik na ligaw na kapatid pabalik sa iyo. At sa lahat ng aming misyon sa buhay, lagi kasana namin kag kagabay at kasama. Sa ngala ng Ama, Anak, Espiritu Santo. Amen. Tatalakayin ko ngayon ang lahat ng tungkol sa santo. Exactly how many saints are there? There are over 10,000 named saints and beauty from history, the Roman martyrology and orthodox sources, but no definitive head count. How does the church choose us? How does the church choose saints? Canonization, the process that church uses to name a saint, has only been used since the 10th century. For hundreds of years, starting with the first martyrs of the early church, saints were chosen by public acclaim. Through this was more democratic way to recognize saints. Some saints' stories were distorted by legend, and some never existed. Gradually, the bishops, finally the Vatican, took over authority for approving saints. In 1983, Pope John Paul II made sweeping changes in canonization procedure. The process begins after the death of a Catholic whom people regard as holy. Often, the process starts many years after death in order to give perspective on the candidate. The local bishop investigates the candidate's life and writings for heroic virtue or martyrdom and orthodoxy of doctrine. Then panel of the theologians at the Vatican evaluates the candidate. After approval by the panel, the cardinals of the congregation of the causes of saints, the Pope proclaimed the candidate venerable. The next step, beatification, requires evidence of one miracle, except in the case of martyrs. Since miracles are considered proof that person in a heaven and can intercede for us, the miracle must take place after the candidate's death, and as a result of a specific petition, the candidate, when the Pope proclaims candidate beatified or blessed, the person can be venerated by particular region of group of people with whom the person holds special importance. Only one, uh, one more miracle will the Pope canonize the saint. This includes martyrs as well. The title of saint tells us the person lived a holy life, is in heaven, and is to be honored by the universal church. Canonization does not make a person a saint. It recognizes what God has already done. True canonization is infallible and irrevocable. It takes a long time and a lot of, lot of effort. So while every person who is canonized is a saint, not every holy person has been canonized. You have already known many saints in your life, and you are called by God to be one yourself. When did the church start honoring saints? By the year 100 AD, Christians were honoring other Christians who had died and asking for their intercession. Many people th think that honoring saints was something the church set up later but it was part of Christianity from the very beginning. As a matter of fact, 
the practice came from a long-standing tradition in the Jewish faith of honoring prophets and holy people with shrines. The first saints were martyrs, people who had be given up their lives for their faith in the persecution of Christians. Escaping statues or pictures of saints idolatry. Look at the pictures of your loved ones in your wallet around or around your home or of office. Why do you keep these particular pictures? You might answers you might answer you carry those pictures to remind you of people you love to help you to help you feel that you're close to you. When, the, when you're not together or to share with people you meet. But you probably didn't say you worship them. Those are some of the same reason we have statues and pictures of saints. Seeing a statue of Saint Therese of Lisieux, who lost her mother when she was a child, might make us feel less alone when we are grieving. A picture of Saint Francis of Assisi might remind us how much he loved God's creation and make us more aware of our environment. Do Catholics pray to saints? We pray with saints, not to them. Have you ever asked anyone to pray for you when you were having a hard time? Why did you choose to ask that person? You may have chosen someone you could trust or someone who understood your problem or someone who was close to God. Those are all reasons we ask saints to pray for us in times of trouble. Since saints led holy lives and are close to God in heaven, we feel that they, their prayers are particularly effective often. We ask particular saints to pray for us if we feel that they have particular interest in our problem. For example, many people ask Saint Monica to pray for them if they have trouble with unanswered prayers because Monica prayed for 20 years for her son to be converted. Finally, her prayers were answered in a way she never dreamed of, her son. Augustine became canonized saint and doctor of the church. What is patron saint? Patron saints are chosen as special protectors or guardians overseas of life. Their areas and include occupations, illnesses, churches, countries, causes anything that it is important to us. The earliest records show that people and churches were named after apostles and martyrs as early as the 4th century. Recently, the popes have named patron saints, but patrons can be chosen by other indi individuals or groups as well. Patron saints are often chosen today because an interest, talent, or event in their lives overlaps with the special area. For example, Francis of Assisi loved nature and so he is patron of ecologists. Francis de, Sa de Sales was a writer and so he is the patron of journalists and writers. Claire of Assisi was named patron of television because one Christmas when she was too ill to leave her bed, she saw and heard Christmas Mass.